Hi, it's Benjamin again with another relearn tutorial. In the last session we created a few mappings to control an EQ plugin with your DAW controller. The result was working just fine, but only for a particular re-EQ instance. Today we will turn our mappings into a reusable preset, one that works on any EQ instance that's currently active. But at first, let's add one more mapping to the mix. I want to use the jog wheel on the right side of the controller to navigate within the list of re-EQ presets. The relearn instance that you see here is exactly the one from the last session. Press the add one button and a new mapping will appear. Press learn source and turn the jog wheel. Now press the edit button in order to open the mapping panel. When turning the jog wheel again, we can see that it is now connected to our mapping. I will show you a slightly different approach to learn the mapping target. At first simply pick a random re-EQ preset. Then go back to the relearn mapping panel and press the menu button in the target section. You will find a list of recently touched targets. Now simply choose the correct one. And that's it. We can now use the chalk wheel to browse presets. Look how nicely the faders react to preset changes. By the way, for this you need at least Reaper version 7.21. Previous versions had some issues with this kind of preset switching. Now let's get back to our initial mission to create a reusable preset. As I mentioned before, the current mappings are not reusable. They only work for this particular EQ instance. Let me show you in detail what I mean by adding a second EQ instance. I create a new track, let's call it drums. and add a new re-EQ instance to it. Ok, now we have two EQ instances. I'm rearranging the windows a little, so that you can see everything. And now watch what's going on. I move the faders on my controller, and they still control the first EQ instance even though the second EQ instance is a currently active one, or focused one, we should say. Even if I change the track order, or rename tracks, or rename FX, it will always control this particular EQ instance. And even if you close the EQ window, the faders will still control the EQ. Let me show you that by displaying the EQ in the track control panel. Now you can see a mini version of the EQ in the track control panel. And as expected, the faders have still the same effect. There's a name for this kind of targets. We call them sticky targets, because they stick to one particular FX instance. When you use the learn target function, relearn by default creates sticky targets, at least when you put relearn on a track FX chain. When you put it on the monitoring FX chain, it's another story. What can we do to make our targets non-sticky, so that we get a reusable preset? At first, let me present the final solution in case you are in a rush. After that I will add more detailed explanations, which should help you to gain a greater understanding of the involved concepts. At first you want to make sure that all mappings are visible. Then go to Menu, Modify Multiple Mappings, Make Targets of List Mappings Non-Sticky with Track Unit, and FX unit. Confirm and it works. Then press save as, enter a preset name, confirm and our reusable preset is finished. Now let's take a step back and talk about what we have done in detail. We are now back to the previous state, our targets are still sticky and we don't have a preset yet. In relearn, each mapping has its own target, so each mapping decides on its own whether the target is sticky or not. So let's enter a specific mapping by pressing its edit button. What we need to change is the so-called FX selector. At the moment we have the selector particular. This selector makes our target stick to a particular FX, so it becomes sticky. There are quite a few other choices here. 
For example, you could choose the named selector in order to control an FX instance with a certain name or even a name pattern. Or what looks very interesting, we could choose the focus selector or the unit selector, which is actually the best selector in our case. But at first, let me show you what the focus selector does. So I click on focus. And now I would expect the first fader to control whatever fx is in focus. Let's try it. Okay, this didn't work and I already see why. It was simply the wrong mapping. It was the mapping for fader 5. So let's open the mapping for fader 1 instead. Again, I will change the fx selector to focused. And now it works. The first fader controls the currently focused EQ instance. Now watch how the other faders are not affected by this change. They still control the first instance only, because every mapping uses its own selector. What can we do about that? Obviously, I could now edit each mapping and set each FX selector to focused. But wouldn't it be nicer if somehow all mappings could magically refer to the same FX instance? And wouldn't it be nice if we could make our preset more flexible, so that it doesn't just work with a currently focused FX instance, but also with a particular instance or a named one? It would be great if we could decide on a case-by-case -case basis how to use our preset. Turns out Relearn has a solution for that. Look at that lower part of Relearn's main panel. What you can see there is a current unit track and unit fx. Currently we are in the main unit, so we see the main unit track and the main unit fx. Today we are only interested in the unit fx, not the unit track. The unit fx can be changed to whatever fx instance we want. By default it's set to the currently focused fx instance. And that's exactly what we want, so we don't need to change it in our case. Now we just need to make sure that all of our targets follow the unit fx. Let's start with the target in the first mapping. I simply change the fx selector to unit. As a result, the first fader should always control the unit fx of our unit, which is currently set to the focused fx. And as you can see, it works. As expected, the other mappings are still not affected, because we haven't changed them yet. Clearly, we need to adjust them as well. Now we could go into each mapping separately and change the selector manually. If you have many mappings, this can be quite much effort. Fortunately, Relearn provides a shortcut for that. At first, make sure that all of your mappings are visible. If you organized your mappings into groups, make sure to show all mappings in all groups. Then press the menu button, go to the Modify Multiple Mappings menu, In there, navigate to Make Targets of List Mappings Non-Sticky. Then choose With Track Unit and FX Unit. The track is not relevant in our case, but choosing the unit track is a good default. Relearn wants our confirmation if we really want to change all those mappings, and yes, we want. In the list we can now see that all fx selectors have been changed to the unit fx. And indeed, all of our faders finally control the currently focused Q instance. The faders automatically move depending on which fx is focused. And even browsing presets using the chalk wheel works as expected. Amazing, we have some really flexible and reusable mappings now. The last step is to save our mappings as main preset. Press the Save As button in the main preset section and enter a descriptive name. I will enter Faders to EQ. Great, now we have a dedicated main preset for controlling an EQ with faders. You can load it into any relearn unit. It will appear in the main preset list as user preset. Let's try it with our current unit. At first we clear all mappings by choosing the none preset. And then we restore our preset faders to EQ. Now everything should work as before. We did a good job with this preset. It's reusable and flexible. We could even use it with non-Mackie compatible door controllers. 
as long as we have a controller preset for the controller that implements the door control scheme. But there's still one thing I need to mention, because I think it could come as a surprise to you. You might have got the impression that this preset only controls re-EQ instances. But that's not the case. None of the FX selectors we have talked about care about the type of FX. I just opened a re-delay FX. And surprise, surprise, our preset works with the re-delay plugin as well. Our faders control its parameters. As we can see, the focus selector doesn't distinguish between re-delay or re-EQ or any other plugin type. The only thing it cares about is whether the plugin has focus or not. For our control scenario, this is clearly not what we want. Our preset was meant specifically for re-EQ. But don't worry, in the next episode we will learn how to deal with this correctly. Maybe you are now thinking, isn't that too complicated? Well, do you still remember the numbered FX parameters preset? We used it in tutorial 7. For this kind of generic preset, not distinguishing between different FX types makes total sense. We learn is a tool with a very open-ended approach. The control scenario that we are interested in in this tutorial is just one of many, many possible control scenarios. So rest assured, there's a good reason why we do things that way. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. We are going to talk about nothing less than Relearn's popular autoload feature.